Hi guys and welcome to Hillbilly Military Modeling. Uh, this video is a continuation of our M18 Hellcat by Academy in 135th scale. Uh, as also the construction part 3 we'll be working on the turret. First up we're going to be assembling the recoil mechanism and the breech uh, block of our main armament. So we're going to start with the recoil mechanism, which comes in two halves. And we're just going to fit those together, and we're going to glue it up. Now I've decided not to sand these seams yet. We're going to let the glue set up, and then we'll come back and uh, sand those down nice and smooth. And we're going to do the same thing with the breech block section. We're going to glue it up, and once the glue is dry, we'll come back and sand the seam down nice and flat. So these two halves are separated by the recoil plate, which we will insert in between the two and just glue them together. And here we are with it assembled, and we're ready to move on to the next step. Here we're going to be putting the... Um, recoil shields or guards on and it also catches the shells uh, so this is the back plate and as you can see it has uh, some rather large ejector pin marks in it so we're going to go ahead and fill these e ejector pin marks and also on the lower shield uh, it, we've got the same thing now this because of the orientation of this uh, breech assembly. It's kind of pointing down out of the way. You can't really see it with the model assembled, but I decided to go ahead and fill that too since I'm kind of in the mood of filling these holes. <laughs> so once it dries, we'll just go ahead and file it off real quick and then we'll just take our sanding stick and come in and smooth everything out. So I go to a finer sanding stick to remove all the scratches. And paint will fill that nicely. It'll look really good when we're done with it. So in order to attach these shields, um, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue into the holes for it. And we're going to just assemble this one side first. And now we're going to go ahead and set the rear plate onto the guard, making sure that it's got plenty of, to me, extra thin on it. And then we'll go ahead and set the other side in place. So it kind of makes a a U-shape around the breech. A little fiddly here, but <laughs> we finally get it. I just want to make sure that I got plenty of glue on this to hold it together. And everything is seated properly. Now we need to check and make sure that it's perfectly square. <laughs> or as square as I can get it anyway. And uh, yeah, it goes together really well. It looks pretty good. So on to the next step, we'll be assembling our turret basket and turret ring. And some of these parts are really small and kind of in the way, so you wouldn't be able to see my hands on it um, or me putting the parts together. But it goes together as advertised. There's no issues with it. Of course, each of these parts have to have the traditional scraping and sanding, you know, the little seams from the... Uh, two halves of the molds. So here we're attaching the basket that hangs underneath the turret ring. So it's got three points of contact. The one in the back and then the one on the front there. That's probably the uh, swing motor for the turret. And so that fits together pretty good. And so we'll go ahead and glue those up. So 
So one little problem that we do have is the hanger on the side, it really doesn't fit quite right. So I'm going to put some glue in there. First of all, I'm going to soften it up a little bit on the bottom because it needs to spring over a little bit. And I'm going to try to tweak it <laughs> just a little bit. Um, I probably should have waited and put that on at the very end after I'd hung the basket. So we're going to push it over into place. Put some glue on it. And kind of press it in where it needs to go. Now to me, extra thin sets off pretty quick. So... Um, if you don't get it into place right away, you may have to add more more glue, but I can get it to touch, and I just want to make sure that it's just in the right place. I don't want to have to break this loose later, so I'm just going to hold it here for a minute and let it set off, and then we'll be ready for the next step, which is going to be our turret halves. So we want to make sure that our turret halves fit uh, well enough <laughs> we may have to do some filling uh, so our elevation block is installed it's nice and tight and then we just need to put the two halves together once we get them in place a little bit of to me extra thin and we'll just run that along the seam now right on the back of the turret we have some spare track sections um, I don't think that's going to be seen, but we do have a problem here in the very front. So I take my self-closing tweezers and kind of clamp it together. And we'll add some glue there and let that set up and dry. So I've added a little bit of uh, Mr. Surfacer 500 here along that seam. After it dries, we're just going to go ahead and buff that down with a sanding stick and smooth it out. Now there is spare tracks that goes over the back and then right here uh, inside the bustle of the turret is where the radio goes. As you can see right there, so I did fill the seam in front of it, and I'll sand that down. So now we're going to start working on the two halves of the top of the turret. So there's a front half and a back half, <laughs> well not really half, but uh, here I've attached the storage bins and the internal side to it, um, and also the periscope, and there's also some pads that are there so that the soldiers don't bump their head on the edge of it. And same thing for the rear section that covers the bustle on the turret. It has these two pads. So we attach those and they'll be much easier to sand uh, once the glue dries on them. And we have a couple of more of those pads on the sides of the turret there. And I've also gone ahead and just installed the um, binocular uh, holders I guess we'll call them. Next up is the main armament. So I've decided to go ahead and use the canvas covered mantlet. So I glued up the two sections of the short barrel, put the muzzle on it, and it all went together very well. It's also, uh, I did put the uh, uh, Mr. Surfacer 1000 on it and sanded it out. Uh, to make sure the seam line was covered. So one of my concerns here is that <laughs> there's no positive tabs for this. So we're going to have to be real careful when we go to attach it. Uh, I don't want to attach it yet though. It'd be easier to paint that way. Next we're going to go ahead and put these bustle racks on the side of the turret bustle. And they actually fit really nice and very little cleanup on these parts. So we're just going to go ahead and tack it in place with to me extra thin. And 
And it glues up nicely. I say that a lot, don't I? It glues up nicely. All right, so we've got these scribe lines here on the side of the turret. So there's a box that goes on there on both sides, and that holds the inclement weather uh windshield and canvas covers for the driver and the assistant driver so we just have to make sure that we've got them in place there right where those lines are at and we'll just run to me extra thin along that and let that set up There we are with those installed. And I've also installed the uh, 50 cal ring. No problems with it. So we've got these little lifting eyelets. Well, it's not really an eyelet, it's a loop. And so I'm placing those into place. Now you'll see that I've left the uh, sprue gate real long on it. That gives me something to hold on to <laughs> and I'm able to set and adjust these loops in place. Now, after that glue sets up, we'll trim those off. So I want to check the fit and make sure that uh, the front section of the turret roof sets like it's supposed to. And I suggest that everything you do on this kit that you test fit it and uh, you may want to sand and adjust as necessary <laughs> but I'm not going to glue this up yet uh, because there's a lot of painting that we have to do on the inside there and that's going to be much easier to do uh, if this is not in place so here the glue is set up on these little loops so I'm going to go ahead and trim that off and take a small sanding stick and we'll just take and sand that contour and remove the excess there make sure they're nice and smooth whoops almost dropped it <laughs> but yeah it's much easier to sand these little parts like this than it is to trim it all up and try to sand it and then you know the carpet monster gets it and well we just want to avoid all that so with it firmly attached to the turret we don't have that issue okay so I I kinda like that result so now we're gonna work on this 50 caliber machine gun I know it was earlier in the step but we're gonna go ahead and do it now at the, since we got all the big stuff taken care of but as you can see here, our 50 cal, oh, it's got seam lines, and the detail is kind of sketchy. If I had a replacement for this machine gun, I would go ahead and use that, but I think we can salvage this gun. So we're just going to trim off these little sprue gates and clean up these mold lines. Now here I'm going to use my... Uh, number 11 exacto blade here and just center up on the end of the barrel so that the barrels not drilled so we're gonna have to do that ourselves <laughs> so uh, once I'm happy with the location of the hole I just select me a small bit and we'll just drill that out and so yep that's kind of what I wanted so we have these vent holes around the breech end of the barrel. As you can see here, they're not very deep, not a lot of detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the modeling knife here just to uh, put a little mark in the plastic right where we want our drill bit to start. And so I size up a drill bit I, I have no idea what size it is <laughs> but uh, it's one that fits the outline of these holes and uh, we're going to drill all these vent holes out in, in this little cooling uh, barrel shroud it's a short shroud but 
We're going to improve that detail by drilling those out. As you can see here, I've got some of them already drilled out and they're looking pretty good. So we're going to continue on with that. So once I get them all drilled out, I use a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin and just brush over uh, where we've drilled all those out. And Tamiya Extra Thin will take care of all the little fuzzies, <laughs> the little plastic pieces, uh, and take and melt that in, and it looks pretty good. So I think we've done a good deed there. We've, we've managed to salvage our 50 cal. So now we're going to attach our ammo can to it. And we're going to glue that up. And we will attach our grips on the rear of the machine gun. And now this is tricky. Um, I like the fact that the charging handle on this M2 machine gun is separate. However, as you can see here, it's got these sprue gates on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this charging handle in place first, and then we'll trim that off later after the glue has uh, set up and it's pretty secure. Otherwise, we've, we're liable to lose this part. <laughs> we don't want to do that because then we'll have to make another one, and we don't want to do that either. So now we're ready to paint up our turret basket and turret ring assembly. And it's going to make it a lot easier to hold on to by using this alligator clip. And we're just going to clip it to the bottom, and there we go. Maybe we won't spray our hand too much. So it's off to the paint booth. And we're going to spray this with the Vallejo uh, acrylic white, flat white. It is a primer type white, so we don't have to worry about priming it. Next up, we're going to use flat steel, testers enamel, and do a little bit of dry brushing. And I'm just going to do this on the diamond plate that is in the bottom of the turret basket. And this is the area where the soldier's feet are going to scuff off uh, the paint. And we're just going to emphasize that also on the pedal. We're going to let that dry, so I'm going to use XF49 uh, Khaki, which is the color that Academy calls out for all of our seat cushions and seat backs. So we're going to go ahead and paint these cushions up. Now you need to make sure that you keep the paint nice and wet and don't brush back over it or Acrylic paints tend to peel right back off, so we're going to make sure that that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you got to come back in and repaint it anyway, so just keep it nice and wet and keep it moving. you got to paint it kind of quick. Now, if you use a little bit of Tamiya Extender, then you don't have that issue. So while our seat cushions dry, I'm going to use this gray... Um, that I painted the transmission with in the previous videos. Um, and we're just gonna add a little color here to, there's some sort of box. I don't know what it's for, but there's a box. <laughs> and also our swing motor. Um, just to add a little color uh, down inside the turret there. So that if a viewer can actually see it, they can see a little bit of extra definition. Now, I know all these parts are supposed to be just white or green, but, you know, I'm going to paint mine gray. <laughs> so next up is XF57 Buff, and we're going to use that to simulate uh, wear on our seat cushions and seat backs. So we're using uh, the sponge chipping method here to apply this paint. And that'll give us an uneven wear appearance. As you can see there, looks pretty good, except we kind of have a little bit too much on that lower seat cushion. Uh, 
but that's okay we have a fix for that so in order to tone that back a little bit because I think it's a little bit too much we're going to use uh, our khaki again uh, same color that we uh, painted the seat cushions and we're just going to use the chipping sponge and just do a little chipping over top of that and kind of tone down the great big marks that we, <laughs> we put in our seat cushions uh, there we go yeah that's much better yeah I'm liking that so the sponge chipping method really works uh, it can work for canvas it can work for metal it's it's all about context so next up is German Panzer gray and so I'm going to kind of put a little bit of, uh, of this flow medium in it to keep it from drying up on us and we're going to be chipping up the white paint So the most realistic chips that we can put are really, really small chips. And in order to get that, uh, you need to have a real close cell uh, type uh, chipping sponge to do that. So th this sponge come out of uh, some packing material for some electronics. So where you find your materials can be in various different places. You just need to kind of keep your eye out for those. Um, and keep thinking about modeling and what can I use and what's going to work well. So I'm trying to keep these chips really small. However, I, I do have a problem with, <laughs> when I start chipping. <laughs> I Sometimes I can't stop. You know, it's like eating potato chips. You can't eat just one. So once I'm done with the chipping and that's dried, I'm going to take this silver acrylic from uh, Model Master. And I'm going to come in and paint this, uh, I think it's the manual traverse lock, just so that it stands out. Just to add a little bit of color deviation down inside here when the viewer looks down inside the turret. Uh, if it's visible, then he can kind of see it, a little extra detail. And I'm using the same silver acrylic here just to paint the edges of the teeth of our turret ring. Because any paint that's on there is going to get rubbed off uh, as the turret uh, slews from left to right. So there's not going to be paint left on there. So we're just going to highlight that with the silver. Now that we've got all that done, we're going to use X22, which is a gloss clear. Thin for our airbrush with uh, X20A, I think, thinner. And seal all that in, nice gloss coat. Now we're going to use this Tamiya Panel Liner Black. And we're going to use that to accent um, all the little corners and nooks and crannies. And uh, as you can see here, it helps. Uh, to smooth out the line between our seat cushion and the seat base. So we're just going to use this panel liner on all the little joining lines. Now this is an enamel based product so <clears throat> cleanup is kind of easy. Um, especially over the uh, gloss clear that we put on. We'll use this testers enamel thinner once all of that has dried and come in and clean up all the panel liner. So we really just want a damp brush and you got to kind of play with it because if, <laughs> if your panel liner is real thick uh, you might need just a little bit more uh, thinner. But we're just going to go over it and then go back over it <laughs> you know uh, make sure that everything is blended or cleaned up so that it looks natural and uh, the panel liner will bring out uh, all the detail once that dries uh, we're going to use model master acryl flat clear and we are just going to coat everything with it 
Now once that dries, the AK Streaking Grime, which is an enamel based product, is what we're going to use to muddy up our platform for our turret basket. So I'm just using my brush to put a little bit uh, in my paint palette and a few drops of uh, enamel thinner. And I'm checking the consistency of it here because uh, this is a, a wash and it's a little bit thick yet so I just take and thin it out just a little bit more and we're gonna mix it up and I'm just checking how it runs I, now I kinda like that so we're gonna use that and we're just gonna touch it in on the uh, platform so the platform has the um, uh, diamond plate so I put my first coat on where the soldiers feet are let it dry and then we're going to come back and add a little bit more which is going to make it just a little bit more grimy in certain spots right where we touch it and we're also going to go around the turret ring because it's really bright white and of course dirt and mud and stuff is going to settle on this and it's going to subdue it uh, somewhat on the horizontal surfaces so we're going to go ahead and put that on and we can come back and touch it up with this enamel thinner after it dries and we're just going to touch up and blend all to your taste um, you might like yours dirtier than I like mine and there's nothing wrong with that just going to move it around a little bit look at it now around the back where the radio is it'll be a little bit cleaner so uh, soldiers will be reaching over and scooting down around the radio so I kind of left this little platform here too white I'm gonna go ahead and dirty it up that's underneath the ready racks for the ammunition from the turret I don't think you can see it at all but just in case we can uh, we're gonna go ahead and dirty that up and that will do it for this video so this is construction part three and uh, of course we haven't built everything because well we've kept things in sub assemblies so it'll be easier to paint which will be in our next video and you're not going to want to miss that part so uh, if you're new to the channel and uh, you're you haven't subscribed uh, go ahead and subscribe it's free it doesn't cost anything and hit that notification bell uh, that way you'll be notified when I post uh, the next update, the next video. And for all my subscribers, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, it's because of you guys that uh, I make these videos. And leave me a comment in the comment section. I love hearing from you and uh, I promise I will answer you back. Uh, and let me know uh, what you think of the build so far. <clears throat> So until next video, guys, stay safe, and I will see you then.